We saw back in chapter 4 that we can use forward rates to calculate our zero rates uh, to draw out our, uh, zero, uh, our zero curve. Well, if we apply a convexity adjustment to the euro dollar futures rate, we will get the forward rate. Hence, we should be able to use euro dollar future rates to do the same thing. So let's see what that looks like. So let's say that we have an observed rate uh, from time 0 to time t1. We have a zero rate for that period of time. And we look at the euro dollar futures contract, and there's a futures rate uh, at time t1, which applies to the time t, ti to ti plus 1. So it applies for this period of time. We can observe this. So we've already calculated the zero rate. We can observe this. The question is, well, then, from 0 to ti plus 1, what is the zero rate for that period of time. And that's what we have to figure out. Well, <clears throat> we can continue on with what we're doing here. Fi, this rate here, is equal to the rate for I, R, I plus 1 times T, I plus 1. So this is just the interest rate times the period of time minus R, I, T, I minus this interest rate for that period of time divided just by this period of time, divided by ti plus 1 minus ti. There we go. So you'll recall from chapter 4, we simply isolated the variable we were interested in, which is the ri plus 1. So let me go through the derivation of how that is done. All we have to do is multiply both sides by the numerator. We'll get fi equal to, oh, sorry, fi ti plus 1 minus ti equals i plus 1 ti plus 1 minus ri ti bringing ri ti over to this side and this over to the other side ri plus 1 ti plus 1 equals f ti plus 1 minus ti plus r i t i and then all we have to do is divide through by i plus 1 we will get r i plus 1 equal to I won't call out all the sub letters I'll just write it out for you over and that's exactly what we have in the book uh, except it just sort of gives you uh, it goes from here to here and I like to show all the steps when it's possible to show all the steps, how we got from here to here in case there's any misunderstanding of, wait a minute, how did we get here? We simply just rearrange terms and isolate it for the variable we do not know. That's the variable we do not know. So can we take a zero rate that we observe and a euro dollar futures rate after the convexity adjustment is made and figure out what the zero rate is for the full period of time? We certainly can. And the book gives us uh, an example to work from, and it's, uh, it's wordy, and it has a lot going on. And whenever you have uh, examples like that, it's always best to draw a timeline. So we're told that the uh, observed zero rate from 0 to 400 is 4.8. We observe a futures rate that goes from day uh, 400 to day 490 of 5.3. Another futures rate that goes from 491 to 581 of 5.5. And another one that goes from 589 to 679 to 5.6. Notice that these are all 90-day periods. But the distance between them is not 90 days. 400 to 491. In the other case, we have uh, uh, 491 to 589. It's either a 91 or a 98-day period. Remember, Eurodollar futures contracts expire on the third Wednesday of their particular month. They're three months apart. They expire on the third Wednesday which will result in 91 or 98 day settlement. So there we go. So it's close enough that we can still work with it. <clears throat> so the first one we have to figure out is we have the zero rate for zero to 400. Can we get a zero rate from zero to 491? Well, yes we can by simply saying, well, what is that rate? So basically we're looking for R 491 a zero rate for 491, and we're going to use just this. So all we have to do is fill in what we observe. Fi for that period of time is 0 0.53. Then we, multi we take uh, multiply it 
sorry, by the distance, uh, the, the distance in time that we're covering, which is 491 minus 400 plus 0 0.048. Uh, which is RI, 0 0.048, and that's for 400 days, over the difference between them, TI plus 1, 491. And we just have to solve for that, which is 0 0.04893. Sorry, I said over the, di the difference between them. I meant, sorry, over the distance to it, not the difference, the distance. Sometimes I stutter. So that's how we figure out the rate the R rate for 491. So we have an observed zero rate from 0 to 400. We have an observed zero rate from 0 to 491. So the next one that we have to do is R, where does it start? 589. So we have to do 589 from 0 to 589. And all we have to do is the same thing. On this one, uh, FI is 5.50.055 and the difference in the time within the brackets is 589 minus the 491. 589 minus 491 plus RITI. RI is, we've already figured it out, 0 0.04893. 0 0.04893. And TI, TI happens over here at 491 because of the the contract we assume is it's 491 to 581, but we're extending it all the way to 589 because that's where the next period starts. So we're just going to just going to stretch this one over to here. That's all we're doing, and we divided by TI plus one. Well, TI is for uh, 491. I plus one brings us to 589. There we go. It's the distance from zero all the way through. We will get zero point zero. Four nine nine four, and that's how it's done. So if we wanted to extend it to all the way to six seventy nine, R six seven nine, we can easily see how uh, uh, we, that's done. Zero point zero five six is the FI, and it's the difference in the dates, which is six seventy nine minus where did we end up last time? Five eighty nine six seventy nine minus five eight nine plus. RITI. Well, RI, we just figured out, is uh, 0 0.04994, and TI is that period of time, uh, 589, R589. Over, how far out are we going? 679. And we will get 0 0.05074. And of course, we can keep going and going and going, and you can see how that can extend our LIBOR zero curve by using your dollar futures rate after the convexity adjustment is made.